Now, I want to give a disclaimer before we really get into it. But I really love the Word of God. I mean, I love it. And when I say I love it, I mean I cherish it. I cling to it. That's my source. When I have problems, I go to it to see what I need to do. And when I preach, I always give ample scriptures. So, because I want to make sure when you leave here, your spirit is well nourished. So prepare for a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> but I really did feel like God wanted me to speak about this. It wasn't just something, oh, well, I need to figure out what to talk about. But it was something I really felt in my spirit. God wanted me to tell y'all a message from God to the people. I want it to be at the forefront of the things that we do in this life. The message today is being readers, hearers, and doers of the Word of God. As I said, I'm, I'm so thankful that I can be able to speak today. So I thank y'all for giving me this opportunity. I'm able to speak to y'all as a congregation and to my family and friends as well. So this truly is an honor. When I say that, I'm not just saying it just to say things. I'm telling you because it truly is to me in my heart. <clears throat> anyway, let me go ahead and open with a couple quick little stories that happened to me. I went to the dollar store the other day. It was actually a month ago. It was me and my grandma. <clears throat> we had went to Walmart and there was some people outside, a family, begging for money, for food. So we felt like it was our Christian duty to do something. Not just wave at them, keep on driving, to do something. So we gave them some money and then we decided to go to the dollar store. We wanted to get some food too. We wanted to, you know, provide for them. We wanted to be instruments for God to provide for them through us. And as, as I was there, I was wanting to get a Bible too. I was like, you know, I, I don't know if they are Christians. He said, God bless you and everything, but I want to get one just in case. Because I didn't have an extra Bible on me, so I wanted to go buy one for them. So I went to the dollar store, and I couldn't find one. I mean, I looked all throughout the store. I found romance novels. I found plenty of those, stacks and stacks of them. And I looked and I found crossword puzzles and every kind of book you can think of. But I did not find the words of God. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I pick up a book, the Holy Bible, I don't look at it as other books. I look at it as the very words of God. So, when I say I cherish it, I mean I hold it as a holy, righteous thing. And I think everybody should have one. If you're a Christian, I think you should have one for sure. So I went up to the guy at the cash register and I said, hey, I was looking for a Bible and I just cannot find one. He said, I don't think we carry one. And it just blew my mind. And I started walking around the store with a righteous anger. You don't have the words of God? And I, would, I didn't yell at him and I didn't say one harsh thing to that man because that's not his fault. He just works there. But I was frustrated. I was mad. How come they don't have the words of God? I was unable to give it to him. I went back and nobody was there. But still, that stuck with me. It hurt my feelings. Because I wanted to be able to give them a Bible. Because like I said, I didn't know. But I pray that somehow God does reach out to those people and help them truly. Also, I had another experience at Goodwill not too long ago. And I went in there and they had a couple Bibles for sale. 
I said, oh, I'm going to get some of these. I ain't going to be without a Bible next time. I like to be able to give people the Word of God if they're in need. So I uh, went to purchase them. There wasn't a price on them. They said, well, sir, we can't sell these to you. It's from the Gideons, and they aren't even supposed to be on the shelves. And I said, oh, man. I said, well, what are y'all going to do with them? He said, well, I just got to throw them away. And I said, oh, no. It's the Word of God. You can't just throw the Word of God in the trash. Amen. It hurt my feelings. I'm an emotional man. And I think you can be emotional and still know that you're a man. But it hurt my feelings. And I said, isn't there something we can do about this? Can't you just set it outside by the trash and I can go pick it up? I said, I'm just going to give it to homeless people. I'm not going to sell it. He said, I can't do it. <sighs> that righteous anger came out again. No, I didn't say nothing to that man. But I was mad. Because like I said, I love the Word of God. I cherish it. I need it. And I want others to need it too. So I, I had a friend of mine that told me, he said, well, maybe you should call the Gideon. <coughs> Tell them about it. So I did. I got on the horn and I called the Gideons. I said, hey, you know, they're, they're down there throwing y'all's Bibles in the trash. I didn't figure y'all would want that kind of thing. He said, oh, no. He said, I'd rather him just give it to you. And that's when I got really mad. Because I knew that people that would want to distribute the Word of God would want somebody else, a minister, to have the Word of God to give to people. That's what they're doing it in the first place for. So my feelings were hurt. And I pray that today, if you've never had a true desire for the Word of God, that I am still one in you today. So know that that's my purpose today. No matter what happens here, whether I become the pastor of this church or not, I'm thankful that I give you this opportunity today to instill a love and desire for the Word of God if it hasn't been there already. So know that, that I'm coming after you today with that intent. <clears throat> I came across one of these quotes on the internet and I thought it was really good. And here it is. <clears throat> one of the marks of true Christianity throughout history has been its emphasis on the Bible alone as the sole authority for living the Christian life. In Latin, it, it's referred to sola scriptura, meaning the scripture alone. Amen to that. Amen. I want to live my life by the scripture alone. Not what the world tells me I need to live my life by. Not what's the popular opinion. But what does the word of God say? What does God want me doing? That's how I want to live my life. Every day. Not just when it's convenient. Not just the scriptures I want to pick out and choose from, but the ones line upon line, precept upon precept. Every, I want to go by the Word of God. Even if that's uncomfortable for me sometimes. Even if that means i got to tell somebody, hey, what you're doing is wrong. It says so in the Word of God. I want to be able to make sure I do that. That's part of being a living sacrifice. Doing the hard thing sometimes. Sometimes you gotta do the hard thing. Sometimes you gotta go alongside a family member or a brother and say, hey man, what you're doing is wrong. The Word of God says this. So when I heard that, I said, yes, please for me. Yeah, that's what I want to do. By the Scripture alone. So as a minister of, the, of God, of the gospel, I feel that it is my duty to feed you. Feed you with the spiritual food. Listen to this scripture, John 21, 15 through 17. Now if you want to turn there, good. But uh, I have a lot of scriptures, so it might be kind of hard to keep up. But anyway, I'll go ahead and read that for you. 
So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. See, when Jesus is talking here, he's not meaning give them some food, some hamburgers or cheeseburgers or pizza or whatever. He's talking about feed them with the word of God. If you love me, if you truly love me, then feel me. You know why? Because he knows that we need it. He knows that we need it. So that is exactly why I'm going to do that today for y'all. I'm going to feed you with the spiritual food we all desperately need. So, so please be hearers and listen intently to what I'm saying. Because truly, you will greatly benefit by the words of God. Too often I hear someone making excuses as why they don't want to read. And before I heard anybody's feelings today, I used to make them too. So I'm no better than anybody else because I used to do it too. And here's some of the reasons, that the excuses I used to make. I said, I don't understand what I'm reading. I know that if I read, I'll be held accountable to the things that I've read. So I don't even want to read it. It's too confusing. I also heard, I don't have enough time. But let me tell you, none of these are good excuses. The only excuse that I think, the only few excuses I think that are valid are you're blind, you can't read, or you have no way of attaining a Bible. You just, you just can't get one. Because there's really no good excuse. I used to I used to have a Bible sitting on my bed. And I was living in sin. And you know that Bible collected dust. Literally. I don't mean that figuratively. It literally collected dust because I never picked it up and read the words inside. And if only I would have, maybe I would have been convicted of the sin that I was living in. So I pray today that if you have a bottle sitting by your bed and it's collected dust, that you dust it off. And you open it up. And you start reading it. And you finish it. You don't let it sit there anymore. You pick it up every day and you read that thing. Every day. Even if it's just a little bit at a time. Even if you don't understand it. Even if you say, man, that's confusing. Even if you feel like you don't have enough time in the day, you make time. You don't let it. You don't let there be another excuse. Unless there are those three things that I said. If you're blind and you can't read, or you don't have a Bible, don't let that be an excuse anymore. And I'll tell you right now, if you're in this room and you don't have a Bible, you come to me and I'll send you one in the mail. Or if you have access to a computer, you go online to BibleGateway.com and you can read it for free. Instant access. So don't have no more excuses. You know, there's a lot of people around the world today begging Wishing they had a Bible to read. You know, in other countries, unlike us, we're blessed here in America. We can just walk down to the bookstore and say, hey, I want a Bible. Maybe not dollar store, but <laughs> you go to a Christian bookstore somewhere, or, you know, Walmart maybe, and buy you a Bible. But there's people in other countries that you're persecuted unto death if they have a Bible. There's people who will write scripture on napkins 
just so they can have just a little bit of something to read. Because they cherish the Word of God too. They love it. Please don't be spoiled because we live in America and the Word is all around you. Don't be spoiled just because you have the Word of God sitting by your bedside and it's doing you no good but collecting dust. Pick it up. Read it. And if you don't understand it, say, Lord, please give me the wisdom to understand this. Write your Word on the tablet of my heart. Because He will give you that wisdom. He will write it on your heart. He will help you understand it. The first time I read it, whenever I was coming around to the Lord and trying to do what's right, I was like, man, this is just too hard. But I'm going to keep doing it. And you know, the more that I read it, the more I understood. And that's just like anything in life, isn't it? You got to practice to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. I'm going to get to that scripture in a minute. It's just like anything. If you want to be good at something, you got to put some time in on it. You just can't be expected to pick it up as soon as you, to understand everything as soon as you pick it up. No, you got to put time in. You got to put work in. You got to be students of the work. Study every day, like I said, every single day. You know, I, I believe that it, it's an insult to God if you don't read it. Because he wrote this, he wrote this for you. Now this is my Bible. This is a the New Defender Study Bible. I like to study. It's got commentaries and it helps me understand. Maybe you need to get a study Bible. But I like to study. I've been doing this since 2006, and I love it. I tell you, I really do. It's not a burden, ta burdensome task for me. I don't get over there and say, man, i got to read the Word today. No, I say, oh, yeah, I get to read some more. You know, how often do we really go without natural food? Not very much, right? It's a rare, it's a rare thing for you to just go without food on purpose, right? The only times I can tell you that I do that is whenever I'm fasting. Amen. But other than that, y'all can tell I eat pretty good, right? <laughs> I eat pretty good. And I like to eat. Most people in here probably do too. But how often do we go without reading the Word of God? Man. Let me ask you this. Tell me what you get out of this. Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He's telling us right here that you cannot truly live without the Word. Yeah, you can eat. You can exist. You can eat natural food and exist. But true life comes from the Word of God when you read it. You know, it's most people eat about three meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you know, I've heard that it's actually better for you to eat smaller portions all throughout the day. Maybe about five meals, small meals a day. It's better for your body, actually. Instead of eating huge meals. So think about that in relation to the Word of God. How much should we actually be reading the Word of God? Should it be once a day? Well, do we eat once a day? I think we should match it up with what we eat naturally. That's my personal opinion. You may not be there yet, but hey, I hope you do get there. Because you know that if you constantly are reading the Word of God, you're going to be constantly thinking about His ways. You're going to be like, man, you know, I just read that. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You're going to be convicted more often. You know that? You're going to have more of an understanding. You're going to be able to have that word for somebody who needs it. If they're depressed, you're going to say, hey, well, go to this scripture. Go to that scripture. We're all supposed to be students of the word.
Let's get into some more work. How about that? Hebrews 4.12. Like I said, it might be kind of hard for you to keep up, but hey, I copied and pasted from BibleGateway.com, so if they're, if they're wrong, then I'm wrong. Okay? <laughs> For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God is living and powerful. You know, whenever I pick up the Word, I usually get something new every time. Even if I've read that Scripture a hundred times. Man, how did I miss that? Is what I usually say. But it's because His Word is living. You may get something nobody else has ever gotten because God wanted to reveal it to you. Specifically. And now you're able to share that with somebody else. Because it becomes a treasure to you. I got certain scriptures that are treasures to me. Yeah, all the whole Bible is a treasure. But there's also certain scriptures that I favor, that I like. A little extra. Because it means a little extra to me. And then when you share that with a brother or sister in Christ, hey man, I just read this today, it's so good. You just can't wait to tell somebody about it. Because that's how good the Word of God is. And when it says it pierces even to the marrow of your bones, I think, I think about this. God is all up in me. God is inhabiting me through His Word. I love that. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know... We're fighting in a spiritual war right now. And I don't know how much of you realize it, but it's waging around us. Raging around us. Yeah, it seems calm right now. But it's the peace before the storm. You know, there's really demons out there, people. And they will really mess with you. In Ephesians, and I suggest everybody go and read Ephesians 6, the whole thing. It talks about this. It talks about our spiritual armor. But it talks about the Word being our sword. Something we use that we can actually fight the devil with. Not that we're just passive and, oh, the devil's attacking me today and I can't do nothing about it. No. I'm going to speak the Word of God at that time. I'm going to do like Jesus Christ did when He was tempted. He spoke, he spoke the Word of God every time the devil tempted him. The devil tempted him three times. And Jesus, every single time, just quoted Scripture to him. You know what it says? The devil left. Do the same thing. He's our example. So follow his example. Quote the Scripture in your own life. You're dealing with problems, trials, and tribulations. Quote the Scripture. Hey, I stand on the Word of God. I'm going to stand. 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 7. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let me tell you today, you may not want to fight this war, but you better do something. You better be equipped. you got to do it through reading the Word of God. I'm telling you, the devil is out there in his demons. You may be dealing with, something, dealing with something today and you don't know why. Why am I having to deal with this? I thought I was doing right. Well, look at, look at Job. I always go back to the book of Job. <laughs> he had it hard. But he never cursed God. He never did. So let's remember that. Let's be like Job. 
Romans 15.4 For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. This whole Bible was written for us. It was His love letter to us. It is our instruction manual. It is our war battle plan. Remember that when you're dealing with those trials and tribulations in your life. Yeah, can, can psychiatrists help? I'm sure they can. Somewhat. Not as much as God can. No, God actually fixes the problem. He knows how to fix it. So go to Him first. Go to the Word first. 2 Peter 1.20-21 Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I've heard a lot of people, mostly it's atheists, say that this was just written by a man. I say, well, what about them books you read? Who was that written by? It was written by a man, wasn't it? You agree with those evolutionary teachings? Well, God used men to write this. And that's what I'm going to trust on. That's what I'm going to trust in. Luke 21, 33. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Everything that is in this room will be dead and gone or destroyed at one point in time. But His words will not. And thankfully, if we trust in Him and believe in Him, we'll be there with Him. But you have to make that step. You have to be bold. You have to say, I will serve the Lord today, me and my house. You may not want to, but me and my house, we're going to. Because we believe what it says in this Word. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed to rightly divide in the Word of Truth. See, like I said, you got to be students. you got to study the Word. It's not, good, it's not good enough just to come in here and sit and hear. Yeah, we do need to. We need to hear it for sure. But we also need to study to each of us, our own selves. That way when we come in here and we hear the preacher saying something about the Word of God, we can say amen. We can say amen because we have read it for ourselves. And we believe it for ourselves. Like I said, don't make any more excuses. From this day forward, make a stand and say, I will not make another excuse. I'm going to read your word. You wrote it for me. A love letter. Let me ask you this. If I personally hand wrote you a letter, and I handed it to you, and I said, hey, will you read this for me? I wrote it for you. Something I want you to know. Something I really hope you can understand. And you say, yeah, yeah, I'll read it. And you sit it by your bed and you never read it. And I ask you a week later, hey, did you read that letter? Uh, no, I haven't got around to it yet. Okay, will you please read it today? I really hope you read it. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. And you just let it sit there on, on your dresser. And it starts to collect dust. And then all of a sudden, a big calamity happens and you, your house gets burned. And you say, oh man, well, how did that happen? And the only thing that survived was that letter and you open it up and you read it and it says, hey man, you, you better move from here. They're having some problems with power lines and your house might get burnt down. Well, you didn't read that letter. You, weren't, you didn't heed the warning I gave you. Well, that's what he does in here. He gives us many warnings. But if we don't ever read it, we won't know. But we can't get to heaven and say, hey, I didn't know about that. Yeah, you did. Because I gave it to you in that Bible right there that you never read I gave it to you through that pastor that told you to read it that one time. And you said, okay, but you didn't. And like I said, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings today. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But I do hope that I give you a kick in the rear end. <laughs> I do hope I do that. See, where you say, yeah, I am going to do it. I'm going to read it. That's what I want. 2 Timothy 4.2 
Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. I've had to live that one out this past week. They asked me to uh, do the Bible study for Wednesday. It was the day before. And I normally I like to prepare. You know, like I've been preparing for this one for about a month now. Seriously. <laughs> So, normally I like to prepare, and I like to be well prepared. And also, I like to have the Holy Spirit speak through me. And that's what I pray I'm, that the Holy Spirit has spoken through me today. I pray that there has been anointing on this message. That whenever you hear this, that that word does pierce you. That it comes inside you, and you're like, man, I, I've got to do something different today when I go home. I want to live a different life. I don't want to be stuck in the same rut, the same routine. So I pray that it does that for you today. Be ready. Be ready in season and out of season. Preach the Word. How are you going to preach it if you don't have it in you? Do you know that we're all called to be ministers in some kind of way, or shape, or form? may not be coming up here and standing in the pulpit, but you might need to be a preacher to your brother, a preacher to your mom, your dad, your son, your grandson, your friend at work the random person you meet at the grocery store. Because God wants to use every single person in this room today. Every one. Everybody has a purpose in this world. And God wants to use you. The God of everything wants to use you. Will you accept that call? Or will you reject it? Will you say, uh, I'll get to it some other time. Please don't do that. But I want y'all to listen to the reverence these Old Testament men had to say about the Word of God. Joshua 1.8 The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I really love that. Meditate on it day and night. Remember how I said we might need to read a little bit more than we do. Maybe five times a day. Maybe three. Whatever, you know. But meditate on it after you've read it. Think about it. Practice it throughout the day. Psalms 1-2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. There's like four or five other scriptures that talk about it. Just meditate on it. Now it's not talking about a yoga meditation. Um, it's talking about ponder on it. Think about it. Chew it. You know, kind of like a cow does with grass. You know, I mean, that's kind of might be a crude explanation, but they chew the grass. Then they kind of throw it back up and chew it some more. And they keep doing this process. We need to do the same thing with the Word of God. Keep thinking about it. Keep doing it. Keep practicing. Let me tell you all this quick little fun fact. With estimated total sales of over 5 billion copies, the Bible is the best-selling book of all time. I love to hear that. I hope you love to hear that too. Five billion copies that were sold. That's not just the ones still sitting on the shelves. That's sold. And yeah, that might not be 100% accurate. It actually might be a little more. Who knows how the recording accuracy was back in the day when they first started printing the Bible. There might be a lot more Bibles out there than we know of. But I just really like that. I like seeing that. Yeah. <coughs> No, I'm reading the best book. Hey, what book did you read today? Oh, Harry Potter series? Oh, okay, whatever. I read the Bible. That's the number one book in the world, you know? Hey, I'm going to read the best thing that there's out there. And this is the thing that gets me through my day every day. Even through the hard times, especially through the hard times. And I know there's people out there who can attest to that. Yeah, I know it for a fact. I don't have to doubt it or question it. I know that that Bible gets you through your days. Thank you, Lord.
Lord forgiving us something like that. Now listen to this. The Holy Bible is the best book you could ever read. If it is the only book you ever read, let it be the one you finish. It is timeless. It is instructional. It is insightful. It is truthful. It is a love letter. It is a weapon for spiritual war. It has action. It has drama. It has comedy. It has mystery. It has suspense. It has knowledge. It has wisdom. It answers questions about life and our existence. It helps you understand who God really is and who you are to God. It gives you peace. It gives you hope. It gives you joy. It sustains you. It is your daily bread. It is addicting if you will ever let it fill you up. It is living. It is powerful. Will you read it? People like to read, you know? I'm not, I've never really been much of an avid reader. I just never have been. I'm more of a movie guy. I like to watch movies. I've never really liked to read. There, but there is one book that I love to read and can't get enough of it, and it's this one right here. The number one bestseller of all time. And I'll tell you right now, you need to read it too. But now that we know that we should read it, now that we know that we should read God's Word, let's make sure that we're hearers also as you have come today to hear the Word of God. Let's go to Romans 10, 14-15. Before I get into that, I just want to say, hey, I'm sorry if your butt's starting to get a little uncomfortable. I'm sorry. But I want to make sure that everybody today goes home full of the Word of God. I don't, want, I don't want to be held accountable to a, a malnourished congregation that went home. I've heard of some pastors that preach one, they just give one scripture and they preach their whole sermon. And I, oh man, I don't like that. I want to make sure that you are full when you leave here today. No matter what happens, like I said, I want to make sure that I was the one that gave me the food. And God threw me. So forgive me if this might come, take a little bit longer than you expected. God's Word is worth it. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to fill you up, okay? <laughs> Romans 10, 14-15 How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe of Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. This is the best thing I can give you. And that's what I'm doing. This is the best I have to offer. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to send you out today too. Yeah, I'm the preacher here today, but let me tell you, so are you. Like I said, there might be a family member, a co-worker, a friend that you might need to preach to. But you make sure you're studied in the Word and you know what you're talking about first. But that's why it says study to show thyself approved. So now that we know that we need to be readers and hearers, let's get to the most important part of it. Doers. Luke 6.46 but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? You know, there's going to be a lot of people in heaven who have claimed to be a Christian. Who say, Lord, Lord, have we not done many mighty works in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? And done wonderful works. And he will say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. For I have never known you. Yeah, I can get a nice shirt on, and I can put a tie on, I can even put on a cross, some nice shoes, nice pants. I can get up here and tell you what the Word of God says. But if I go home and I start doing the things that are against this, am I truly a doer of the Word? Have I truly made Him my Lord? 
Let me tell you this. Do you really love him? John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me and, and will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I'm going through these fast because I want you to get this overall theme that's going on here. 1 John 2, 3-4 Now by this we know that we know Him. If we keep His commandments, we who said, says, I know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in Him. 1 John 5, 3 For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. What, what was the overall theme y'all got from those scriptures? If you love me, keep my commandments, right? Now I've used this example before and I'll use it probably a hundred more times in my life, a thousand, I don't know. But if I go up to you and I say I love you and then I slap you in the face, are you going to believe me? Probably not, right? I wouldn't believe it. You know that it's a slap in God's face when we say, hey, we love you, but I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Yeah, I'm going to go get drunk every night if I want to. Yeah, I'm going to go outside and have sex outside of marriage all the time. Yeah, I'm going to cuss every single day. I'm going to do whatever I want, but I love you. You know that God doesn't really accept that. He says, if you love me, obey my commands. So if we really want to get to heaven and say, Lord, Lord, And he tells us, get away from me, I've never known you. Do you really want to keep continuing in your life that way? Or do you want to say, no, today I'm going to be different. I'm going to change my ways. I am going to obey your commands. Because I do love you. And like I said, I'm not saying this to hurt y'all's feelings. I was there. I lived that lifestyle. I said, yeah, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But you know what? It even says in James that even the demons believe. But they shudder, right? So it takes more than just a belief. It takes action to do something about what you've heard. And now today that you have heard this message, you can't leave here and say, I never knew that. Oh, you're going to know. Because I made sure you knew. Because I wanted you to know. Because I want to see you in heaven with me. Because I love everybody here. Even if I don't know you, thank you for coming in here and listening. I still love you. I'm coming close to the end, so just for y'all who might be getting antsy. Just a little heads up. Matthew 7, 24, 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. I pray today that if anything, I do, I pray that y'all will stop building your house in the sand, that you will live by the Word of God and do it. You will read it, hear it, and do it. But I think whenever I read that scripture, I thought about this, and I hope that I can get around to getting it done. But I wanted to make a little painting that shows this castle high up on the rock and a little kid on the beach building a sand castle trying to build what he's seeing and he, he spends all day out there building an elaborate <coughs> sand castle and it looks beautiful but the first tide that comes in and washes it over and knocks it down it's gone forever 
But you look up and that other castle that was built on the rock is still standing there. Yeah, the waves are crashing up on the rock, but it ain't touching the castle. Yeah, the winds may blow against it, but it just breaks off. It goes another way because it can't knock it down. That's what I want to build. Spiritually. I want my house to be founded on the rock. On the Word of God. James 1.22 This seals it for me. But be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You know we deceive ourselves sometimes? That's why He tells us don't deceive yourselves. Hey, don't just listen to the Word. Don't just read it. But do it. Do it. That's what will truly show thyself approved. But in conclusion, I want y'all to listen to this little diagram that I found. It's a cone of learning by Edgar Dell. When we read something, we learn about 10% of it. When we hear something, we learn about 20% of it. When we look at pictures, we get about 30% out of that. When we watch a movie or look at an exhibit or watching a demonstration, we learn about 50% of that. If we participate in a discussion or give a talk like I'm doing right now, we learn about 70% of that. If we do a dramatic presentation or simulate the real experience or do the real thing, we learn 90% of that. Whenever I read that, I was like, man, that just brings it home, doesn't it? When you do it, you learn it 90% of the time. You learn 90% of it. So when you add hearing and reading to that, that's the 30% plus 90%. Man, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> so let's make sure we're readers, hearers, and doers. That way we can truly be students of God's Word. Now, I'm sorry if, if it felt like it was dragging on today. I, I certainly did not mean to do that. But I did, like I said, want to make sure you left here fully nourished in your spirit. And don't stop there. Don't say, well, I got my word in for the week. And wait till Wednesday or whatever. No, go home and get some more word in. Keep founding your house on the rock. But I just want to thank y'all again. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Like I said, I cherish it. I hold it in high regard. It's an honor to me. Be able to give the word of God. So I thank you again today.